All right. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Okay. So Genesis 15 um, says, "After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great." And then, and then, skipping over to verse six, and he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. So it starts off the chapter off with after these things. So what are these things that just happened? It's that um, Abraham just rescued Lot from three kings and in a very awesome way um, refused the gift from the kings and said, I will not take anything from you. And so um, he made this big vow and then he's feeling kind of insecure and God comes and assures him um, to fear not. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But I was thinking what what was the reward though because he dies with just one heir and um then god takes him out shows him all the stars and says this is how your descendants are going to be and um abraham believed the lord and it was counted to him as righteousness and these um he abraham obviously knows that he can't have a million sons and so he's seeing that um, through this that while well, when God says your reward shall be very great that he's including Abraham in something much bigger and beyond even his own lifetime and he believes and he trusts that so um, in Hebrews he um, it says that about the heroes of faith these all died in faith not having received the things promised but having seen them and greeted them from afar and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth and so what abraham does is true of all the heroes of faith which is that they see something that is not seen in front of them from afar they trust it and they believe it and they get they um, recognize that they're part of something far bigger and so same with us we there are things that we don't see right now but the the struggle of faith is to see that actually though we're part of something much bigger and in, in a sense right that's actually the greatest reward isn't it like what kind of reward is it is it is it a great reward to have something that is so small that is limited to your own lifetime to, to be li limited to your own self just individual self no it's actually when we follow Jesus, the reward, great reward is God, the relationship with God, and also that the, the fact that we can actually become a part of something that is so much big, so much bigger than us, mm -hmm. that we get to start to see and greet them from afar, mm -hmm. the impact that one life, one little life that we have can make. Mm -hmm. So it's basically just, yeah, God does multiply our lives way beyond their lifetime and that is truly a great reward i think um and then um just an interesting few few more thoughts about this text and they shall come back here in the fourth generation for the iniquity of the amorites is not yet complete one interesting note is that when israelites finally enter the promised land um, a lot of people have problems with with what god tells them which is that you know he tells israelites to destroy uh, the inhabitants of that place but a part of that purpose actually in that we find in Joshua is to judge the people who are there um, like Sodom and Gomorrah like it's like there's a judgment there um, and um, you know one of the apologetics about this is that we intuitively understand that a culture of wickedness could actually get to a point of no return where it cannot be redeemed or fixed anymore that it just simply needs to be eradicated because it will harm it will do more harm than good by spreading its culture, evil culture, such as child sacrifice, which was a, one of those practices that were very prominent. Um, you know, like that kind of a thing. And we intuitively understand that, of course, we, we as human beings can't, won't be able to tell when, we, when a, a, some, a culture reaches that point of no return. Um, but in this verse 16, actually, hundreds of years before that, we see a glimpse of God withholding judgment um, saying the iniquity of the Amorites has not yet complete, is not yet complete. Meaning the point of no return has not been reached yet. Judgment is coming. It's not the 10th plague yet, but the 10th plague is coming, but it has not been reached yet. So we have that kind of picture here that's really interesting um, that people don't think to look to when they're reading Joshua. After this, in the final few verses, when the sun had gone down and it was dark, um, behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. Here's a picture of like gruesome picture of an animal being cut in half and laid on both sides. And then there's actually a stream of blood. Um, so this was actually a practice. This was a practice that was um, 
uh, that was, you know, between, uh, two parties between two parties entering into yeah, a contract, entering into some sort of a covenant where both parties actually are supposed to kind of walk down that path of blood, mm -hmm. saying to each other, if we, I do not keep this promise, it's a very serious promise, and if I don't keep this promise, then I will, it, my fate will become like these animals. But here we'll notice that only God walks through that. It's a unilateral covenant. It's actually a covenant that's God says, I will, I will give this land to you and to your descendants, right? Um, and um, and yeah. the smoking fire and the flaming torch, what is that? <laughs> yeah, Sarah asked that question to me as we we're discussing this. And I said, you know, what does that look like? You know, because he just talked about that, talked about the Israelites being in Egypt, right? And enslaved and then smoking fire <laughs> and the smoking pot. Smoke, fire. What does this look like? <laughs> pillar of cloud by day and yeah. so it's a pillar of fire by night. <laughs> kind of interesting. It's like a, it's just, just a visual foreshadow or imagery of what that exodus would look like, even um, you know, as God's just talking about how He will deliver those people out of enslavement. So, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah, so it's a beautiful picture of faith and covenant. That Abraham has no idea what's to come, but God's giving him a foreshadowing of it and making this covenant, and then Abraham believes God. Yep. All right. So, have a nice day. Bye.